So those are some shots of your university, and I hope they bring back some happy memories of your time here. Now, the main reason for making this video is to record your graduation. Today, you join the graduates of the university, and at the moment, those are about 80,000 in all. Moreover, they come from all countries, and they're now spread in all corners of the world. So this is a university, not just a university of the United Kingdom, but a university that is recognised worldwide. It is a large university and an important one, and in graduating from it, you've done well. We, of course, like all other universities in the United Kingdom, are at the moment under some pressure. Society is wishing its universities to change, and the University of Manchester is no exception. So continuously, we have to move forward to adapt to what is required and to abandon what is no longer required. We believe we're doing that. But there are one or two things that remain constant and can't be changed. We, when we educate our students from this university, are very keen that they should be able to do various important things. They should be able to marshal fact, develop argument, and above all, I think, have a regard for the truth. And we hope we've done that as far as you're concerned. But enough of all that. Now on to the video of the graduation itself. It is my pleasure and privilege to congratulate all those who are graduating today. I'm also pleased to welcome parents, relatives, friends to this ceremony. Today, we celebrate the success of our graduands, the due pomp and style. I particularly congratulate the graduands on surviving the ordeal of finals. It's now 37 years, 37 years, since I graduated, and I still dream about finals. I forecast that many of you will do the same. In my university, finals was divided into two parts, tripus part one and tripus part two. In my dream, I'm always taking part three which in reality does not exist. And in my dream, I face questions I cannot answer. I've lost the ability. The purpose of this talk, very short, I do assure you, uh, is to persuade you 
to make this nightmare a reality. I'll repeat that. The purpose of this talk is to persuade you to make this nightmare a reality. At this moment, many of you probably think you never want to take an examination again. That is partly because in our system, finals has become such an enormously important moment in anyone's career. I, I think that's wrong. I want to suggest that in the future, we should all be taking university courses all our lives. I believe that in your lifetime, those of you who are graduating now, the normal age, we shall see a great shift of emphasis towards more and more education for adults, more part-time university and polytechnic courses for new students and for graduates. Let me illustrate what I have to say with a few anecdotes. Uh, 25 years ago, I travelled with my wife and family to spend a year at the University of California at Berkeley, near San Francisco. We rented a house about six blocks below the campus in a twilight zone, a mixed community of different racial backgrounds. As we had young children, we soon became acquainted with our neighbours. I was surprised by two things. First, many were graduates, because in California, the number of people who enter higher education is roughly three times what it is in this country. And second, many of them, married, in their 30s, their 40s, were studying for diplomas or second degrees. The American modular system, whereby one can build a degree up slowly, brick by brick, helped them to continue study even when working full time. And a man or, or a woman who found the going hard, perhaps because of pressures of family or, or work, would drop out for two or three years and then return to add another module, another brick towards the final qualification. In British universities, it has been customary in the past for us to close the doors firmly behind you, our graduates, to raise the drawbridge and only to allow back into the castle a few well-talented postgraduates. Extramural education has often been thought of as amateur. Classes in local history for old retired people, perhaps, or modern literature courses for jaded housewives. <laughs> the very word extramural suggests these students are outside the walls, outside the privileged circles that you have inhabited while studying here at Manchester University. After I graduated, to recall some of my experiences of teaching extramural, like most of you, I was very short of money, and in the evenings, I taught for the Workers' Education Association, WEA. I was paid 25 shillings, what's that, one pound 25, uh, for an evening's work. And I traveled hundreds of miles to talk to small groups, sometimes just eight or 10 people, sometimes even less, gathered together in some drafty church hall. I very much admire those who labor in this way. But I have to say that a good deal of what I was doing was just a bit silly, and I'll give some illustrations. A friend of mine taught history to a village group in Yorkshire. An old countryman attended the classes regularly, but never said a word. My friend was anxious about him and wondered what benefit he derived from the course. At last, after about 20 sessions, the man raised his hand to ask a question. Yes, said my friend eagerly. What's your question? Well, said the countryman, you've talked about Julius Caesar. Yes, yes, said my friend. And the countryman continued, you, you've just been talking about William the Conqueror. That's right, said the lecturer. Well, said the countryman, did those two ever meet? <laughs> on one occasion, in my own classes in, on literature, I had a very similar problem with an old man who, who never spoke. I quietly asked the class secretary how I could persuade him to participate. Oh, she said, don't worry, don't worry. Uh, he's stone deaf and he can't hear you but he, he does so like to be with his friends. And I, I once spent four years traveling on a Vespa through the winter evenings on icy roads, storm and wind from Hull to Withensea on the coast to teach a class on the 20th century novel. After four years, I told the class the course must end. I have told you all I know about the 20th century English novel, I said. No, 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 they said, you must return 
We've already forgotten everything you told us for the first three years. <laughs> and so many people have thought of extramural education as peripheral, without the standards and education and discipline of university degree courses. I'm arguing we need to think again about our commitment to work of this kind, the needs of adults. The doors must be flung open for, I think, two reasons. First, as everyone knows, in adult work, retraining programs have become essential as knowledge changes so rapidly. This is particularly true for scientists, engineers, doctors, teachers, whose university studies can so soon become out of date. There is a constant need for professional continuing education. If it is to be of the highest standard, then universities must participate, must rethink their degree structures to enable students to return again and again for further and further qualifications. At Manchester University, we've just started a very successful modular part-time degree. But secondly, in addition to vocational training, we need university courses, particularly in the arts and the social sciences, whose prime concern should be to raise quality of life. The success of the open university has demonstrated the great demand for real professional training in the arts, languages, social sciences. In the English system of education, students specialize too early. We need a system where, through part-time degrees, hundreds of engineers or scientists can study music or politics, languages, where graduates in English can study French or German or Spanish or the history of science. Society were, as I found at Berkeley, people continue to enjoy the privilege of a university education for the rest of their lives. Now, this might seem like special pleading, but in all these visions and what you've been experiencing here in Manchester, the huge cuts in university funding has made it very difficult to implement what I've been describing. I do believe they are endangering this quality of life. Since 1981, in real terms, all universities have seen their grants cut by at least 15% in all cases, many institutions far more. At Manchester, we are proud of our research in science and medicine, our Whitworth Art Gallery with its wonderful collections, our museum with its extraordinary Egyptian artifacts, our Deansgate Library with its illuminated manuscripts, our theatre with its services to drama in local schools, our music department graced by the internationally famous Lindsay Cornett, our arts faculty with so many disciplines, so much research and teaching. I spend my time as Pro Vice Chancellor sitting on committees where we interview the people in charge of all these enterprises. We tell them to cut their budget by another 2%, that a member of staff who has retired can never be replaced, that the richness of our degree courses must be reduced by eliminating special options, that their expenditure on equipment or books must be cut once again. It is a sad business. It's not surprising that throughout education, applies to the schools as well as universities and polytechnics, there is a sense of despair. If we are to develop the courses needed both for undergraduates and to satisfy the growth of postgraduate work which I've been describing, we need more money, not this gradual reduction, this withering away, which has now been going on for eight years. It has to stop. Let me end on a note of optimism. I'm always optimistic, and the situation now I think is so dire that I hope there will be a change of heart. That in the 1990s, and I hope you will support this when you leave here, we shall see renewed investment in higher education. A new technology, the revolution in communications, offers so many inexpensive opportunities for new practices in education. In the future, instead of someone like me crossing icy roads on a motorbike, Seminars will take place with people talking to each other, seeing each other, while they are sitting in their own homes. So, my, to conclude, my hope for you in the future is that you will not, like me, dream you are taking finals again. I hope you will dream that you are taking a university course and you will wake up and find it is true. And so, if your neighbour has fallen asleep during this address, 
Would you please wake them up, tell them they are not dreaming but graduating, and let us now proceed to the real business of this ceremony to transform you all magically from graduands into graduates. Thank you. Mr. Pro Vice-Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate of the University, I present to you for the degree of Bachelor of Arts with honors in American and Latin American studies, Robert John Walker. Mr. Pro Vice-Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate of the University, I present to you for the degree of Bachelor of Arts in American Studies with honours, Simon Jonathan Atkinson. <laughs> Petra Louise Kovnik. Claire Elliott. <laughs> Rebecca Sean Hodkin. <laughs> Jane Hogan. <laughs> Catherine Louise Lane. Kira Jane Leeming. Anthony John Michael McAndrew. Mark Graham Patterson. Murray David Shackelford. Joanne Gail Thomas. <laughs> Rhys John Tudor Williams. <laughs> Matthew Timothy Hubbard. <laughs> Helen Julia Kenny. Andrew McIntyre. Claire Barbara Zokwa. And for the degree of Bachelor of Arts in American Studies, Carenza Francis Gardner. Mr. Pro Vice-Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate of the University, I present to you for the degree of Bachelor of Arts with honors in classics, Deborah Gail Bell. <laughs> 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 
Lynn Joanne Adamson. James Roger Dickinson. Stephen John Robert. Mr. Pro Vice Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate of the University, I present to you for the degree of Bachelor of Arts with honours in English Language and Literature, David Gareth Edwards. <laughs> James William Stanislas Loxley. <laughs> Gabriella Edith Bartai. Ursula Claire Brain, <laughs> Samantha Louise Bray, <laughs> Richard John Burnup, <laughs> Helen Ann Cater, <laughs> Margaret Helen Clark. Victoria Tamson Collison. Bridget Kate Ely. Katrina Elizabeth Irene Forrest. Patricia Ann Harding. Charles Wilson Holt. Ruth Margaret McCants. <laughs> Mary Louise Monroe. <laughs> Erica Judith Newman. <laughs> Miranda Jane Norris. <laughs> Amanda Jane Patton. Joseph Etienne Peters. <laughs> Kay Phillips. <laughs> Emma Caroline White Piggott. <laughs> Tracy Kim Reeling. <laughs> Hugh Stephen Westbrook. Julian Don Whitty. <laughs> Edward Anthony John Woodall. <laughs> Catherine Elizabeth Ogard. <laughs> Rebecca Jane Bezick. Rebecca Parton Brown. <laughs> Philip Dara. <laughs> Joanna Claire Davis. <laughs> Andrew Gordon Fisher. <laughs> Mark Edward Hart. Angela Marie Hart. Sarah Elizabeth Hawkins. Ruth Hirons. Helen Sarah Jones. David Lee Kasapian. <laughs> Bill, 
Bryony Constance Knox Peebles. <laughs> Helena Jacqueline McCall. <laughs> Rupert Charles Meller. <laughs> Jane Paulin. Stuart Graham Podmore. <laughs> Eleanor Mary Smears. <laughs> Sally Georgina Smith. <laughs> Heather Diane Tracy. Helen Catherine Tyra. <laughs> Ian Jonathan Vickers. <laughs> Lisa Jane Jepson. <laughs> Beverly Ann Scanlon. And for the degree of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in English and American Literature, Fiona Ruth Bailey. <laughs> Susan Collins. <laughs> Thomas Wolfgang Collier. <laughs> Emma Jane Jones. Julie Knight. Mark Sinjin Ludman. Richard Sykes Royston. Elizabeth Kate Salas. Alison Walker. Susan Elizabeth Anson Walker. Neil John Cook. Geraldine Glennon. Anthony John Grice. Christopher Mark Wormsley. And for the degree of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in English and Italian, Joanna Isabel Hitchin. <laughs> and for the degree of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in English and Linguistics, Robert Andrew Owen. <laughs> Bruce William Parvin. Susan Helen Wormsley. <laughs> and for the degree of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in English and Philosophy, Paul Michael Armstrong. <laughs> Catherine Ann Coyle. <laughs> Neil Robert Kinnersley. Pro Vice Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate of the University, I present to you for the degree of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in French Studies, James Samuel Dean. <laughs> Timothy Darby. John Mario Cicali. <laughs> Isabel Yannick Finch. <laughs> 
Fiona Catherine Gaffney. Gillian Hughes. John William Highland. Robert Graham Jones. Paul Johansson Martin. Richard John Parsons. Katie Jane Baker. Deborah Green. William Edward Gray. Alexandra Gay Ann Hull. Paul Richard Brandon Jones. Joanne Louise Kelsey. Michael Gregory Spain. Samantha Stern. Caroline Rachel Webster. And for the degree of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in French with Latin, Simon Paul Quirden. And for the degree of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in French with Linguistics, Karine Natalia Herculis. <laughs> Rebecca Mary Forster. Mr. Pro Vice Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate of the University, I present to you for the degree of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in German Studies, Katrin Hillary Davis, <laughs> Leslie Ann Rhodes, <laughs> Yale Atzmon. Sarah Catherine Baldy. <laughs> Helen Margaret Barker. <laughs> Caroline Debrashian. <laughs> Paul Entwistle. Susan Jane Goodings. Claire Louise Hardwick. Jane Patricia Hudson. Sarah Catherine Lanesbury. Christine Lewandowski. <laughs> Juliet Ursula Maria McLeod. <laughs> Judith Catherine Owen. <laughs> Philip James Simpson.
Joanna Wakefield Lee. Jean Pugh. Daniel Jonathan Smith. Joanne Smith. Catherine Ann Williamson. And for the degree of Bachelor of Arts in German Studies, Anthony Michael Hilton Lord. Mr. Pro Vice Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate of the University, I present to you for the degree of Bachelor of Arts with honors in Hispanic Studies, Gina Angela Ferretta. <laughs> Francis Emma Roberts. <clears throat> Victoria Bellon. Eva Beltran. Claire Maria Cassidy. Colette Jane Heppel. Michael Peter Kelly. Carlos Heriberto Verrios. Mr. Pro Vice Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate of the University, I present to you for the degree of Bachelor of Arts with honours in Italian Studies. Ruth Roberts. <laughs> Catherine Ruth Druitt. <laughs> Nicola Maria Galani. <laughs> and for the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Italian Studies, Alison Joan Miller. Mr. Pro Vice-Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate of the University, I present to you for the degree of Bachelor of Arts with honours in Latin, Philippa Jones. <laughs> and for the degree of Bachelor of Arts with honours in Latin and English, Lisa Carmichael. Helen Claire Lockett. Mr. Pro Vice Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate of the University, I present to you for the degree of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Linguistics with Latin, Paul James Bodenham. And for the degree of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Linguistics and Social Anthropology, Tracy Jane Booth. Lisa Wilson.
Mr. Pro Vice Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate of the University, I present to you for the degree of BA with Honours in Middle Eastern Studies, Georgina Elizabeth Bamforth. <laughs> Carol Ann Howes. <laughs> Julia Scherpflin. Charlotte Elizabeth Hillary Heap. <laughs> Hannah Salafa Nadim. <laughs> Janev Hassan Mehmet. <laughs> Joan. Isabel Yodakin. <clears throat> Mr. Pro Vice Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate of the University, I present to you for the degree of Bachelor of Arts with honors in modern languages, Amanda Sandrina Areco. <laughs> Mary Atkin. <laughs> Basil Raymond Blackwell. Gavin Neil Childs. <laughs> Helen Mary Connor. <laughs> Mercedes Ann Cuesta Perry. <laughs> Robert Graham Cunliffe. Vanessa K. Griffiths. <laughs> Rebecca Jane Hill. <laughs> Maisie Wing Yi Kong. <laughs> Elaine Francis Moorhouse. Jonathan Ray. Mark Stephen Richer. Clive Jonathan Wilson. Catherine Ann Wood. And for the degree of Bachelor of Arts with joint honours in modern languages, Michael John Cook. <laughs> Rosemary Ann Burley. Claire Marshall Butler. Elizabeth Ruth Crawley. <laughs> Melissa Ann Kent. <laughs> Sophie Ann Pearson. <laughs> Ruth Butler. Amanda Lisa Crosby. <laughs> Dina Michelle Liefer. <laughs> Mr. 
Neela Serene Masani. <laughs> Selena Ann McNay. <laughs> Dawn Louise Towler. <laughs> Natalie Louise Walker. Lorraine Burke. <laughs> and for Bachelor of Arts in Modern Languages, Sharon Leslie Walsh. <laughs> and for the degree of Bachelor of Arts with double honors in Modern Languages, Nicola Carolyn Wisby. Mr. Pro Vice Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate of the University, I present to you for the degree of Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Russian Studies, Andrew Peter Hall. <laughs> Louise Mason. <laughs> Christopher Mark Walker. Christopher Richard Johnson. <laughs> Susan Jane Ledger. <laughs> Gisela Slater. <laughs> Spencer John Wilson. Christina Wright. <laughs> Mr. Pro Vice Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate of the University, I present to you for the degree of Bachelor of Arts with honors in Spanish, Margarita Rodriguez. Salvos et universitas nostra mancuniensis, hoc placantis consagamus. So now you're leaving the university and going out to start a career in the world. We here in the university wish you the very best of luck. We're sure you'll do very well. When you graduate, as you've just done, you join a body of university graduates called Convocation. This body serves two purposes. First of all, it allows us to keep in touch with you, and we do this by the publication from time to time of a magazine, which we call Manchester Graduate. It'll tell you what's happening in the university, what's new, what's going on, how we're changing, how we are keeping up with the times. But we also want you, through convocation, or indeed by contact with your old professors and tutors, to let us know what you're doing, how you're getting on in the world, what your experiences have been. This is very interesting to us. Please don't neglect to do it. So now, the world awaits you. Good luck. <laughs>